Howdy everyone, Pete Daddy here. We have a brand new League Player Milestone Objective to complete today. And I'm not sure he's worthy of the Whopper button. However, he is a very solid player overall. I'm really not sure what EA is thinking with the League Player Milestone Objectives. They are okay cards, but nothing that just makes you go, Oh my god, this is the missing piece of my team. If I can just plug him in. But we're going to go over the best way, the fastest way. I'm going to share with you some tips, give you a team to dominate this challenge. But before we begin, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe down below. I'd really appreciate it. So let's just take a look at these objectives. Some of these objectives are a little bit crazy. However, I have a lot of fun actually playing a managerial masterpiece, and that's where these games take place. You can only take a 77 rated squad. So you see a lot of different teams, people trying different things. So I, I actually kind of enjoy it. And like I said, with 60 days left to go, I'll work on it a couple games a week maybe and get it done. But let's just take a look at what you have to do. La Liga leader, win 10 matches using only La Liga players in the starting 11. That's all fine and dandy, loving it, no big deal. Scoring machine, score 30 goals using La Liga players in the live foot friendly managerial masterpiece. That right there kind of takes it out of the golden goal realm of possibility because you're going to need like three goals per win if you were going to play golden goal. All I can really say, just try to dominate people, get them to quit, go up three, four, five nil early. Or if you have people, some people will still play golden goal, but most people are just going to play the match out. So you just going to have to try to win. If you go down a goal or two early, maybe you just want to leave and try in, a, in another match. Distribution King, assist 20 goals using La Liga players. And the only thing I want to point out on these two, if you're someone who maybe has a 75 rated team of La Liga players and you bring on Lone Mbappe or Mbappe or one of your best cards off the bench, just make sure you're also scoring with La Liga players and assisting with La Liga players. That's the only thing to be careful. Sometimes in these, I've seen people bring off, bring on Lone Mbappe off the bench and he'll score a hat trick and it's like, well, that didn't really help you anything towards any of these. So keep that in mind. You still need to score and assist with actual La Liga players. Precision ball, assist with the through ball using La Liga players in five separate matches. And the through ball is this triangle button, the top button on, on your controller. Those happen pretty frequently, so it's not that big of a deal to get those. It's not quite as OP as it was last year, but they're still, they're still a great way to play. And what I have found, it doesn't really matter. It doesn't have to be that traditional through ball where you've got your striker making a run and you time that pass perfectly from midfield and lead them on, weight the ball perfectly. You, I've had it where I've made through balls passing backwards, basically where I'm on the goal line. I've got a teammate that's in front of goal. I just hit the triangle button to, for the through ball button just to see if it'll work, and that works too. So it doesn't have to be that traditional through ball. Sometimes I've found the best way to work them is if I'm like, like just outside of the box and I see my striker just making like a little half run and I just hit the through ball button and then he scores that's still an assist with the through ball so those should come fairly naturally however the next one is I'm not sure why EA loves this one especially with La Liga long distance mileage score a goal from outside the box using La Liga players in eight separate matches now, outside the box goals fly in pretty frequently this year, so it's not as big of a deal as it was last year. However, in managerial masterpiece, we're not taking in our best players. We're not taking in these guys that have the greatest curve, the best finesse shot traits, but it, it should still work. I've got I've scored tons of these goals without guys that have finesse shot trade. You just all, the best way it works for me: do a finesse shot R1 RB hold that in while you press the shoot button and that just seems to work you may just have to just try to fly in a bunch of them i like to set them up off of a corner basically i'll play it short to my guy and then make a driven pass out outside the box and then just have them shoot a finesse shot from outside of the box sometimes it goes in sometimes it doesn't but you're basically just trying to get some of those outside of the box goals to to, to fly in just get one or two here and there and you need them in eight separate matches this really should have been flipped should have been assist with a through ball in eight separate matches or just lower this down to five. I mean, eight is a little excessive on this, in my opinion. But anyways, you get all of this done. You do get some. And I also feel like, you know, maybe they could have given us better packs. You know, there's something they could have done. Like instead of 75 plus rated rare player here, make this 25K packs. It's not like we, you know, break the bank with 25K packs. If you got 
25, 25 K packs for getting this done, then maybe that would make it a little bit more worthwhile. Then maybe you kind of could overlook, well, this 84 Lewis Mila isn't exactly the most OP card that ever existed in FIFA. And then, you know, I, I don't know. I feel, I feel like there's a little something they could have done. So anyways, let me share with you the team that I'm going to recommend to use. And it's hard coming up because this year you cannot use silver cards. Last year, manager of masterpiece, you could take in three silver cards. So you could have three 66 rated cards or three uh, 65 rated cards, actually. And this year, you can't do that. So that makes a big difference as far as putting together this team. And I'll just show you real quick. We are we are getting everything out of this. If I just try to put 76 rated on Sufati and for 75 rated uh, Kubo, it takes us up to a 77. So we are milking this for everything it's worth. And the way I went about this, I just I felt like the midfield is one of the most important things this year. You've got to really control the midfield. So much of the game takes place in that area just outside of the box. Not quite at, in the full middle of the park, but you know, kind of in between the middle of the park and the and the goal goal area so kind of like in the final third but not all the way in the goal area so having a player like Valverde I think was very important to me having this Correa was very important and what I have found the toughest La Liga defender I've went against has been Koundé I know a lot of people may like Militao but I just think Koundé does everything it just always seems to be everywhere so I thought it was important to have one top player to bring in goals, one top player in the midfield, and one top player on the back line. And then we've got a lot of great playable players, including Vinicius Jr. But let's just go over the team really fast so you know what to look for. And the way I always do this, these guys are very affordable. They are not expensive. I even had to buy Vinicius Jr. I just bought him for 1,800 coins. I mean, even if he goes down a little bit after this, I'm, he's going to go down to 1,400, 1,500, 1,600. He may even just stay at that range. So you're not really having much downside risk if you're having to buy some of these players. All of these guys are very, very affordable. But let's take a look at it. Correa is just an absolute monster. So many people had them in their had him in their starting teams. He's got great agility. And if you're looking for players or if you're trying to go through your team, you don't want to buy anybody, one of the biggest things you can look for this year is that agility and balance, especially in your attackers, because you need those guys. When you get that ball, players just drop back this year, and it's just the way the game is. It's I'm playing a 60 depth, and my guys, you would think I'm playing negative 50 depth the way my guys just drop back. I mean, that's just the way FIFA 22 plays. So you need those guys when they get the ball in the in the scoring area. They've got to be able to move a little bit and get around 15 defenders and then the four backups and then another keeper. So is you just that agility is very, very important. So Correa is going to be your main man on what, how you're going to score. And the way I would play this, I would move Wule. Like, it, you know, this is what we're going into for chemistry purposes. I would move Vinicius to striker. You certainly could leave him on the wing, and that's where he's most dangerous normally. And his shooting isn't that great. However, the way he moves, his agility is 94. His dribbling is 89. I mean, just an outstanding dribbler of the ball. Like, And again, his shooting isn't that great, but the most important thing this year is to be able to get your attacker into the right position. If you get them into the right position, they just seem to bang it in, and that, that's just the way it seems to happen this year. So I would play Correa and Vinicius Jr. as my two strikers. And I personally, I play in a four triple two. So, and I've got tactics on my channel if you want to check that out. I think that is very effective. I think two strikers work very well this year. So, I would play Correa and Vinicius Jr. as my strikers. I would move Wu Lei to left mid or left cam, however you want to play him. And again, he's not going to be insane there, but you've got to make some 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 choices. I mean, you can't take all high rated players. I mean, I really wanted to get in Yaki Williams. I really wanted to get Portu in this team. Just couldn't get it done with the players that I thought were the most important. So I would move Wu Lei over to left mid is the way I would play it. And I would play Kubo. We're bringing back a big, long-time FIFA fan favorite. Kubo is another one, though. But if you look at Kubo stats, look at that. 86 agility, 83 balance for someone 75 rated. Good enough pace. Now, he's got one of those weird spreads where he's got really high acceleration. Sprint speed is a little poor. But in that final third, he's going to make those quick runs, which are going to be most important. So 
Kubo is going to be a nice addition, and then Wu Lei. In the middle of the park, you, you guys probably know Valverde. He's going to do a great job for you, going to do everything. The one I'm going for on the lower rated is this Danny Rodriguez card. Now, what's good about him, look at that pace for a 75 rated card, 85 pace with 79 acceleration, 89 sprint speed. But look at the agility, 66 agility, 69 balance. Now the good thing is when you pick cards that already have usable pace, you don't have to put a hunter on them, you don't have to put a shadow on them, you can put these less expensive chem styles on them. So I would put something on them, like let me just see, like if I just look at my chem styles for a second. I've got six finishers, which would boost his dribbling up, his agility up to a usable range. So I'd look at something that would boost his dribbling up a little bit. So I, I would put something like that on him. I didn't mean to back out of my team. Let's go back into the squad a second. So when you have guys that already have the pace, you can use those less expensive chem styles on them, which make a big difference. The ones that you maybe have, six, seven, eight, nine, ten of them already in your team that you know you just keep accumulating. At left back, we're going to go with Adria Pedrosa. He's got the pace already. Again, you could put a, a Guardian or a Sentinel or something like him to boost that defending and physical a little bit. You could just leave him all balanced and boost his sprint speed plus five, boost a little bit of everything. But Adria Pedrosa for a 75 rated left back is going to do great. Dest for a 76 rated right back is going to also do a great job for you. He's got the pace. He's another one. Again, you can put a Sentinel on him and his pace is going to be good enough to keep up with what you need. Then at the back again, Kunde, again, the toughest of the La Liga defenders. When I went across Militao and Kunde, it always seems like Kunde stands out between the two of them. So I think Kunde just something about him this year. I don't know if it's just his defensive awareness is higher, but you could certainly boost him up a little bit if you had an extra anchor, if you had something like that to boost his strength up a little bit more. You don't need to go crazy with these guys and put on those like primo chem styles though. And then for my 75 rated, we're going to go with Mengeza. 78 pace for a 75 rated is great. Decent defensive awareness. Again, another solid one you could leave on balance, which is going to boost his sprint speed up a little bit. Balance is, is great because it does a little bit of everything for people. And then for keeper, what I usually do, I look at the lowest rated guys and then just go with the guy who is the tallest. He, Robles is six foot five, and I just always feel like if I'm going to have a cardboard cut out there, I'd rather at least have the most cardboard that, that can be. At least he's going to take up a little bit more room. And as far as then on the bench, this is important. You have to have 75 rated. These do not have to be La Liga guys. Only your starting 11 has to be La Liga guys. The other thing you can do is go through your club. Like, for example, this Cornet card already has 86 pace at, at a 75 rating. You could certainly put him in in the middle of the park, and maybe he would do a better job than Danny Rodriguez. Maybe would be a little bit more defensive. So you maybe could find some left backs, right backs. That those are some of the best cards to bring on as subs. That you know that can also be usable. I didn't really spend the time to go through that, but you know, Devin, let's, I'll take a quick look on my team right quick. I'll just show you what I'm looking at. You just want to go gold, low to high. Pace is what you're always looking for. So, do I see anybody? This Murillo right here with 83 pace. And you can take a look. His agility 73 is not the best in the world, but it's okay. So, I mean, this would be a guy that you could do something with as like a pure CDM, something like that. So, just you can kind of look through some of your 75 rated players to get them done. But this is ultimately what we're playing for. Luis Mila. Solid card overall, you know, I would put a shadow on him that makes his defensive awareness to 93, that gets his pace to 92 acceleration, 85 sprint speed. Solid, solid card, just nothing that you're going, oh, oh man, Luis Mila, I just got to get him in the club, I get him in the team, my team will be elite, son, but it is what it is, it is what it is, but anyways, guys, I got to wrap it up for now, if you're new here, make sure to subscribe, but I will see you guys soon, take care, bye.